What's up, dorks? In today's video, I want to cue you in on something. Dataverse cues. I love them in theory, but I have some frustrations with them in practice. So let's go. If you're from the US, when I say queue, you might think of queuing songs on your Spotify account. Or if you're from the UK, you might think of getting in line at the grocery store. Or some of my dorks might think of the queue continuum from Star Trek. Other than the last example, these are a good analogy of what queues are. Although my feelings toward them might be similar to how Captain Picard feels about Q in the next generation. Dynamics 365 customers may already be familiar with the out of the box solution of queues. But for those creating custom model-driven apps and Dataverse solutions, let me introduce the answer to the problem of workload delegation. Queues get rid of an ambiguous task list and provide a single source of truth for who is doing what and what work is yet to be assigned. Let's take a closer look at them. We'll use a previous example from my video about business process flows. The solution I previously built is for a maintenance request system. Up here, I've got my maintenance requests, which have been submitted by my tenants. Down here, I've got locations where these have taken place. I've also got my tenants, and then I've got my vendors that do the work as well. And if I have a crew of one person, then they know what work is theirs, all of it. But if I have a crew of five or even 20 folks, how will people know what work is assigned to them and yet to be done? For this previous video, we made a business process flow that helps my maintenance crew step through the process of completing the work. So to this, I've now added queue items. So let's take a deeper look at these. So we've got two drop downs up here. This top one is our views for the queue. So changing this will change which columns show up on our queue and the sort order, just like any other view on a table would. You can also create personal views just like I have here, similar to other tables as well. We also have the second dropdown, which filters by which queue we're looking at. So here I've made a queue for each location that I oversee a maintenance crew, but I can also go down to all queues to see all of the objects. So now that I'm in here, I can see the title of the maintenance request, when it came in. Uh, this shows me what type it is. So this is referencing the table that it's on and then what queue it's in. And I can also see who owns the work item. Unlike other Dataverse tables, queues are unique because of this worked by column where they allow you to change who is currently doing the work for the item, but it's not changing the ownership of the original record. So by changing my name here, we could have the tenant who submitted it still be the owner of the record. The way I've set up this queue here is just by manually adding these items for the purpose of this example, but you are able to set up automatic routing rules, which will then sort based on different logic. Queues assign responsibility for the work item, which in my example is maintenance requests. But for other organizations, this could be anything from sales leads to invoice processing, onboarding new hires, or even reviewing documents. And as great as I think this tool could be, we tried to use it with a client and they didn't like it. The main challenge with the adoption of the tool was with the UI. The concept of it is great, but the implementation of it was just a bit clunky. The client had two primary complaints. Too many clicks to get the job done and no auto refresh of the queue. So let's see what it looks like when I pick a work item from a queue, navigate to my own items, and then open the item to begin working on it. Here I've got a list of the maintenance requests that have come in. So I'll come over here and click on this item. And then I have to come up here and click pick. After that, I click pick a second time. And then it's gone from this list so then I have to navigate to items I am working on and open it from there. So that's six clicks just to assign myself a work item and then navigate to it. I feel like it could be cut down to two of select the work item and click pick. It should navigate directly to the item for me. The second complaint was a lack of auto refresh. Due to the high volume and urgency of the work items coming in, 
Our client felt that without the automatic updates, they didn't have a reliable list of work items. Their employees could not rely on manually refreshing the list to do their jobs effectively. Consider how fluid it is to receive an email and get a notification pushed to your desktop or to have that message automatically put at the top of your inbox. This was the type of functionality that they desired from Qs, but the tool doesn't have. So what could we have done? The solution we were building is already full of embedded Canvas apps and custom JavaScript and event handlers. So we could have invested more time in exploring these options to get this tool closer to meeting the client's desires. But those have their own limitations as well. If we were to refresh the form on a timer, then our users could be in the middle of picking an item and then the window refreshes and they lose their work. We brainstormed a lot of other ideas, but ultimately felt that most of them actually provided a worse user experience than the default one. Ultimately, the failing in our experience was the UI of the tool, not the backend functionality. I think a few small changes to the user interface could make this tool so much more powerful. There are a few steps that feel unnecessary and the flow of the user experience feels a bit outdated. So that's been my main experience with Q so far. They're a great tool for identifying work delegation, who's doing what, and what's still available to be done, but the user interface just has a few flaws. So I'm curious if you love them or if you might be more like me and not exactly love them. And if you've encountered challenges with them, how did you fix them? If you have a great example of how you've used cues and you want to show it off, consider joining The Workplace. It's our community of dorks where we help solve each other's Microsoft 365 problems.